gonna get started in just a few seconds. Uh, see if there's any stragglers, any five last minute, five minute people. Now to be fair, I am very late. I should have been here about, <laughs> you know, 48 minutes ago, but you know, traffic, that happens. Oh boy, traffic. Oh hey, we got someone. Hello. Hold on a sec. All right. Uh, without further ado, let's see here if we can just switch over to cam. See, so, so so you guys can hear me. You you can hear me loud and clear. All right. Perfect. Okay. So uh, gonna switch over to uh, just cam. Hello. Hey, you just arrived in time. <laughs> uh, so once again, to anyone arriving here, I deeply apologize for just being colossally late, like LA traffic. You know, it's just, you do a job and then you're driving out of the way and then you're just like, uh, I, I don't, I, why, why, why do cars move this slow? Why, why is this happening? And why am I stuck in here for longer than I needed to? But I will try my absolute best for future streams to make sure that I am on time as much as possible. And yeah, anyway, every hello everybody uh, to anyone who is here whatsoever. Uh, Hack and Wolfen, uh, JP. Let's see here, who else is who else do we have in here? We got we got uh, Six Flags and a few other. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, my uh, to anyone who is new here, uh, my name is Kai Jordan. I am a working voice actor. I, uh, I li I am based in Los Angeles, and uh, I also you know, is it's been raining in California. I keep using California. <laughs> yeah, it's well, it is rain is our equivalent of snow. So you know, as the as the 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 heat miser sings, you know, like like green Christmas and stuff like that uh but even though it's kwanzaa and all that stuff uh <laughs> so anyway yeah my name is kai jordan i'm a working voice actor based in los angeles i have done my most unpopular works include leon and pokemon twilight wanes shinji and talentless nana uh wolf and re-zero prophecy of the throne and all that stuff i'm still finding my way through the industry and this is my first time streaming so and as you can already tell it's already uh well it's it's going to an okay start so far. It's just granted the only thing that was a bit of a letdown is that I started a bit later than I wanted to. So again, I'm it's going to be a bit of a running joke here. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people walking in here. Let's see who's who else is jumping in here. Uh, it's still other people. Oh hey, it's Julian. My boy Julian is in chat. What's up, my man? What's going on? How how is how is the evening of uh today and whatnot? How how's that going? Mic set up. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I was like, I was like, yo, what's going on? Uh, Ubi's fighter, Ubi's fighter king. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, it's nice to meet everybody. Nice to see you guys all here. Awesome. Looks great. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, what we're gonna do is, um, this is the like, this is how I usually start. Uh, uh nothing much. Just watching Hawkeye currently on episode five. Oh, you're in. Not gonna spoil anything, but uh, there's some good stuff that's gonna happen with that one. You're gonna you're gonna enjoy it. I, I won't say anything. I'm ready for it. And no spoilers in chat. It's like chat, don't spoil anything. You don't don't ruin it. All right, don't don't be that guy. Uh, so uh, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, most of the streams for what I'm planning to do is that most of them will start out like this, like start out with a a cam, like this, and then uh. And then we'll be transitioning into the overlays, such as uh, right over here. And there we go. Now you can uh, now uh, your screen won't be now your text won't be as obscured by everything on here, you know. And then you'll be able to see. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So I already fixed Hawkeye. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna set my timer for about. I'm going to stick around here for about an hour or maybe an hour and 30 minutes. And, uh, anyone who's in chat or anything like that, we're going to just, uh, Oh, Hey, hello. Hello, Sammy Cable. Nice to meet, nice to meet you. Welcome to, uh, the, welcome to 
the Kai stream, the the Kiri Kai, the dorky Kiri Kai stream. I'm still still working on a name right now. Still thinking of something. Uh, so right now, what what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set a timer for about an hour and ten minutes, and for the next uh until that timer goes off, we are going to just sit, kick back, relax, have a little bit of chat here and there, and uh, yeah. So. I figure we could start this with a bit of an icebreaker. Uh, well, actually, you know what? First, uh, let's see. I've been trying to catch up with some JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Sadly, I'm way f far. You know, it's possible to catch up. You could. T it's totally possible. It's on. It's all on Netflix. Uh, the pacing is surprisingly wicked fast for a show like that. You know, it's it's pretty not too hard to catch up on. So if you're and if you love just like whack ball crazy shit. You're gonna love JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I, I I guarantee it. And if you want to know any more reasons onto that, I suggest checking out my friend uh, John Walsh, Super Eye Patch Wolf's uh, video series about why you should watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. It breaks down a lot of the details of why that show is so fun to watch, and I totally recommend it. But um, anyway, uh, so before we break into like you know the icebreaker. Of this just chatting stream i uh wanted to um give a uh a brief moment of uh of uh silence for derek j wyatt um to anyone who is not familiar with this individual uh derek j wyatt he was a character designer and he he worked on a lot of amazing shows like he worked on teen titans the original uh, tr um, let me see here if I have this correct. I think he also worked on Transformers Animated. Uh, but his art style, if you ever look him up, like, he has, like, the slickest character designs. Like, the way he draws Robin is, like, one of my favorite looks for the character. And, uh, yeah, indeed. And, uh, I so, yeah, moment of silence. Never got the chance to meet him. Uh, his art was really good, and I grew up watching a lot of his work. And take it easy. So, in fact, um, to honor this man's memory, uh, you know what? Let's start with a bit of a. Uh, uh, here's something for a, uh, a, an icebreaker. We can uh, talk about the original 2003 Teen Titans because. I haven't seen that show in a while, but from what I like, I like growing up with it, it was some of the most like, it was one of the best friggin th friggin Cartoon Network shows around. Like it was just, it was like one of Warner Brothers like best like DC shows. It Like ju you had Justice League, which was already like a well-written show with in the Bruce Tim verse and then you had Teen Titans which was younger much more vibrant and exciting and uh was willing was not afraid to be a little silly and that and especially the stories that they tapped into like I found out like years later how dark the show actually was when I was um I want to say like later on in middle school because I, I I understood the context of like the future episode back when like when Starfire gets sent to the future and then, like, and then, of course, it's like this, it's this, uh, it's a bit of a stretch of a comparison, but it's sort of like, uh, is that what it's called? Haunted? Oh, yeah, oh, no, no, Haunted, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Haunted is, like, one of the best episodes of the series. It's, like, to anyone who doesn't know, uh, Slade, or, no, I'm gonna call him his actual name, Deathstroke, uh, aka Sw Slade Wilson, because they thought that death stroke was too violent even though there's a character named brother of blood but anyway anyway so that episode is really good because it really taps into like how threatening and terrifying death stroke really is like that even like beyond the the grave quote unquote he can still kick your ass and basically torture you in on a psychological level or and plus physical level and it's just like, it's, it's, like, like, everyone thinks that, like, Robin is going insane, and then it's not until, like, later on, like, you know, uh, twists are revealed later on, and then it just, 
it's it's really good. It's a really solid episode. But anyway, I was getting off track. Uh, what was the episode I was talking about? The the future one that's sort of like it's a wonderful life, but that takes place in the in the let me see that takes place in the future in a an apocalyptic future where I guess star I guess it, it, where thing where shit has gone bad basically like shit has gone bad and. Star Starfire enters this future where Beast Boy is like a sideshow in a circus. Uh, Cyborg is barely clinging onto life, like he has like he's hooked into a battery set. He's barely holding on. Uh, Robin is, I mean, yeah, Robin is Nightwing now, so he's Nightwing. Which basically, because the funny thing about that is that there was a bit I didn't know about this that much because I didn't dig that much into Batman lore when I was a wee when I was a wee lad, but. Uh, yeah, like th that. It confirmed that he was Dick Grayson. Thank you, Julian. Thank you. Uh, that is exactly what that was. Cause, cause uh, when I was a kid, I didn't worry so much about secret identities because I didn't really remember secret identities that much. I paid attention more to the superheroes and all that. But anyway, anyway. So yeah. So Robin is Nightwing, and uh, let's see, Raven is. I think it's implied. Like she's just like by herself. She she puts herself in this like in this i want to say that it's uh um solitary confinement of a sort of sense but like it's not like padded walls or anything it's just like she's just by herself in this white room and i don't know much about that raven specifically why she's like that but i know she wears that white cloak again in like the apocalypse episode when trigon like comes rises up and just brings basically hell on earth and yeah, so there's that whole thing. Uh, let me see here. I imagine it has to do with Trigon. You know, yeah, that's that, that's probably what it is. Let's see. I mean, Dick Robin was one of the, was the one who was the biggest part of the Titan. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, when they did that, like, because like the first like uh, hey, welcome aboard. Hey, we got a new follow. All right, awesome. Wait, King Wea, dude. I think I knew who that. I think I know who that guy is. Uh, let me see here. I I think I'm familiar. Hey. Welcome aboard. Yeah, how do you like that? Are you guys hearing those those follows? Are you hearing those uh, little notifications that I put on there? I, <laughs> I, I took a note from my friend Bill Butts, uh, another uh, chill voice actor. My man. A good, good man. Good dude. Uh, I basically did a thing where I recorded the alerts, most of them, uh, through my, you know, my, my recording server, my, my laptop and a few other things and uh, added some effects on them. And it was it was fun to do, yeah. And uh, as we continue to do more of these streams later on down the line, I hope I hope we can do more of them. But uh, shit, I lost track of my thought. Uh, we were thinking about oh yeah, we mentioned how like uh, Dick Grayson was like the one who the biggest part of him. Yes, yes, that's true. Uh, Dick Grayson, he uh, when it came to like the Teen Titans in particular, uh, I. I watched a lot of Boomerang back in the day, and I know that, like, there was a point in time where, like, before, like, Teen Titans was running, I, I saw this, like, one of the older cartoons for Teen Titans, which was, like, the, it was, like, this old, old TV show, like, you know, in the Super Friends era, and it was, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was a little, little goofy, little enjoyable, perfect, perfectly fun to watch, animation was a bit limited, but, you know, that's, how it was at the time and uh it has that certain charm to it and yeah but yeah this show uh 2000 teen titans 2003 it was amazing i love the work on it uh especially the animation all that stuff let's see here then again our other clue it was it was dick's robin was that one with uh, episode larry that's true that's right because uh larry's name uh backwards uh I gotta spell it out now. I gotta type it. Let's see here. Uh, Dick Grayson. Um, Nas E. I can't believe I'm doing this right now. Nas E. Oh, shit. Welcome to the uh, Kai Tries to Spell a Name Backwards Challenge. Uh, let's see. Uh, R. Nas Yarg. Uh. <laughs> Um, and then there's the Nasiar Kid. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Hold on a second. I'm about to. All right. 
chat, I'm, I'm uh, need you to spell chat. Hey, what's up? Okay, so I need to, I'm about to, so to give context, I'm trying to spell out um, Larry's real name backwards, because it's Dick Grayson backwards. I'm trying to, hold on a second. Uh, am I close? Is that, is that correct? Is that accurate at all? Is it good? Am I, am I close at all? I, I'm not going to look it up. I don't want to, I don't want to cheat here. Is that, is that close? I was like, all right, perfect. Got it. 10 out of 10. Great. Awesome. Uh, let me see here. In terms of other Teen Titans things that we could talk about, what were some of your favorite villains in the show? Like, like, or any villains that were like, uh, like maybe like a villain that you already knew about, or maybe a villain that was first introduced to you through this show. Like who was a villain you really liked and why? For me, one of my favorite villains was Mad Mod. He was like, he was this British guy that like was just it's like I I hate children. You know, it's just I don't like misbehaving children and there's nothing I can I just can't stand more on me duckies and like Malcolm that was my first time hearing Malcolm McDowell's voice. Uh, I would later get to discover him in like Superman the animated series as Metallo. Uh and he would then I would then rediscover oh he was in a a really messed up horror movie Clockwork Orange. Yep, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was that, but it's like, I feel like he's hamming it up a bit more where he has like, yeah, exactly. Mad Mod was that. And, and one thing I always thought about with Mad Mod was, uh, um, I thought about like, if there was like ever a live action adaptation of that character, like say, I don't know, um, maybe John Watts gets the opportunity to direct, uh, uh, the Teen Titans movie or Teen Titans sequel, and then he has the opportunity. We're casting Mad Mod as the opening villain. I would think a really good casting choice. Hear me out here. Would be John Oliver. You know, from uh, last week tonight, because like he has that like that sophistication to his voice. He's he has that great sense of humor. He's not afraid to be silly, and yeah, I think he would be great. Oh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. And we got some Jinx love. Yeah. Yeah, Jinx. Um, Jinx is great. Jinx has a great design. Uh, one of my friends, Martin, uh, really likes her character a lot. Like, she's very, really well designed. I, it was the first time I ever heard about her. Even that whole group that she's in. Um, what is Brother Blood's little school called? What is that? Oh, let's see here. Uh, first time. Uh, first time of year. I liked how Cyborg got his own Slade equivalent with how they adapted Brother Blood. Yeah, uh, I don't know much about his, when it comes to my DC comic book knowledge, uh, let me see here, I'll pull, like, the only ones I have on my shelf right now, I got, like, I got some Superman, I've read Batman the Long Halloween, I've read Batman Killing Joke, and most of my DC knowledge comes from basically just cartoons and the occasional movie that I've seen. So I've been, I've always been a Marvel guy ever since like I was a kid. I've read a lot. I've read a lot more Spider Man and X Men uh, as a kid than I did like you know Batman, Superman. But I love those characters. You know that's that's just my knowledge and all that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's been years since I've seen the show, but I remember liking the movie villain though. Oh yeah, uh, I don't remember it, Trouble in Tokyo. I've I haven't seen that in a while, but um, it was like a twist villain but like i don't remember the guys i don't remember like like it was like i don't want to give away anything for anyone who hasn't seen it but like you know to from what i remember it's like the titans like get some like uh weird japanese villains that attack their city and then they head over to tokyo to figure out what's going on and uh let's see here they head yeah and then after that happens, uh, they, they see more of these things pop up, and then, uh, like, the Brushogun... Oh, yeah, yeah, Brushogun. Like, like, Shogun. Brush Shogun. I, I don't... Again, it's been a long, long time since I've seen that movie, so I'd have to watch it again, just because... I'm sure it's like... Is, is Teen Titans on HBO Max? Is it on the Max? Because I gotta... I wanna binge watch that at some point. Uh, but I gotta get through the Batman first, cause that's another one I gotta get into. All right, it's on. It's on there. All right, cool. I, I'll add. The, I'll throw that up on my list. I'll throw it. You know what show deserves to be on the max? 
Class of 3000. Where are my Class of 3000 people? Where are you guys? You guys know what I'm talking about? Andre 3000 as a guy, you know. Hey, Alex, you know, where's my th Class of 3000 people? You know, Andre 3000, Andre Benjamin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, who does not know what Class of 3000 is? Who does not know what that show is? Like, anybody in here, anyone who does not know Class of 3000, the Cartoon Network show from the early 2000s that ran for a bit, but then got yanked out the air at one point because of some, like, complicated thing. Anyone know? Okay. All right. So, most of you are very much into this show, uh, but see any other... Uh, oh, you do not know. All right. So, to educate you on this, Class of 3000 is a series about a... A musician named Sonny Bridges, played by Andre Benjamin, Andre 3000, and he basically throws in the towel for his music career and decides just to, you know, just relax and head back to his hometown. Uh, there's also this, like, this art school that's struggling to find a music teacher, and they're planning to cut the music class altogether because of it, but, uh... Lo and behold, Sonny comes into that hometown of Atlanta, I think that's where it is, uh, like Bankhead, Buckhead, that's the names they use for it, and basically becomes their music teacher. It's sort of like, I remember, I think Mars Reviews was the YouTuber who described it as uh, a mix, like, just like, a, a modern day or contemporary version of, what was it? The Magic School Bus, just with, like, more music videos and stuff. And the music in it, it, the music slapped. It, it's, it's, it's super good. Like, the, the, uh, if you, it, the music is still on Spotify. You could still listen to it. I'm not gonna play it here because I don't want to get DMCA'd striked. But, uh, yeah, that would be, <laughs> that would be a way to open up this string. Get, immediately get DMCA'd. Uh, no, we're not gonna do that. Uh, but, uh, there is, uh, yeah, the opening song is really good and exactly very... Outcast, yeah, it, it is very much like Outcast. The, though to be fair, I think like I've only listened to like a couple songs of Outcast when I was a kid back then. Like, I remember like listening to Hey Ya all the time when I was younger. Um, there was, what are some other Outcast songs? Uh, what are some other really good ones? Do, like anything that Andre Brown? Because I, I did listen to some other Andre Three Thousand stuff like as the years went by. Like I know he did like a collaboration with Gorillaz. Which is like my favorite band. I love the Gorillas. Uh, and like he did this song called uh, "Do Ya Thing," which uh, it was first. First, it was like two D on on main vocals, and then Andre Three Thousand basically did the rest of it. I don't remember the exact lyrics of it, but I'm gonna look it up. It was like uh, "Do Ya Thing" and "Do Ya Thing," "Do Ya Thing," and "Do Ya Thing." See, now I gotta look it up and see what it was. Uh, "Do Ya Thing." Uh, let's see here lyrics of it. Uh, do your thing, do your thing, do your thing, do your thing. Because I think the, what really caught my attention with that one was, uh, let's see here, I mainly know him in passing. I think he's referenced in an Eminem song. I'll have to look that up. Church, so fresh, so fresh, so fresh, so clean, the way you move. You know what? I think I remember the way, is it the one, I like the way you move. Ba ba ba! I like the way you move. Is that the one? Is that the? Is that the? Yep. All right. Got it. Yeah, I knew I was remembering it very vaguely because I had it like it would play in the background of like a lot of parties that I went to, as well as like my car drives with uh with my parents and a few other stuff like that. You know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, but yeah, that's that's something. So yeah, Andre three thousand. That's that's something. That show. Oh man, like they have. I really want that show to be on HBO Max. I really do because I really want to watch it again. Uh, cuz it's it's so fun and it was so fun like I think my favorite songs from Class of 3000 uh if I can remember correctly, Fight the Blob, that was a really good one. Uh Throwdown which, uh, was, like, there was a Cartoon Network music video for it that was, like, super nostalgic for me, and I really enjoyed it, uh, and then there was, uh, let's see here, uh, throw you down, uh, uh I feel like so many shows get lost to time, unfortunately. Yeah, that's fair. 
but you know, if you if if there's enough people that remember it and uh, talk about it, you know, it could just resurge in popularity. There's there is that cult following. Like once the cult following comes in, it was like Chalk Zone always comes to mind. Yeah, I I wish we got more of that. You know, like because like it had new. Ep what frustrated me about that there were new episodes for that show at one point, but they were on Nicktoons, and I had no idea. I had absolutely no idea that it had new episodes. Like, no, oh yeah, Chalk Zone. Oh yeah, so Chalk Zone was a fun little 2000s cartoon. Uh, shows up on Netflix. 2000, class of 3000 shows up on Netflix. I don't know if Netflix has the rights to do that. Do they have any Cartoon Network shows on there? Because, like, most of the Cartoon Network shows that I know of are on HBO Max, which is basically just the streaming service for Cartoon Network Studio shows. But, I don't know, maybe. I, I would expect it to be on something like HBO Max, but we'll see. But, uh, Chalk Zone, yeah, that was that was a fun little show. Like, the the art style, the, uh, the art style of Chalk Zone was really nice. I loved, uh, the characters, the voice acting especially. Like, Candy, My Candy Milo was the voice of Snap, if I recall. And, like, she was really good in that. Uh, it, and it also was just a nice little imaginative world, like, it was a fun thing to watch on Nickelodeon when it was on at the time. Uh, let's see here. Anyone remember Chaotic Hunting? I don't remember that one. Uh, which, I've seen previews for which, but I never watched it. Cyber 6. Like, my friends talk about Cyber 6 all the time. I've never, like, actually seen it, though. Uh, which I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'm, like, uh, disappointing a lot of my Canadian friends right now. Uh, let's see here. Skunk Fu. I've seen that one. I've seen Skunk Fu. That was on Cartoon Network back in the day. I, it was, like... Uh, it w it was, it was an interesting show. It was okay, you know. It was it's like, it's a fun little cute show about uh animals doing kung fu and uh they are named after the thing. It was a little, a little strange, a little weird in some places. But I remember enjoying it. Fun, Yin Yang Yo. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was on Jet X and which was basically it was the Disney action block. It was like. Yeah, they had a bunch of other shows. That's where I first... That was the block where I found about Power Rangers. But yeah, Yin Yang Yo, I remember that. It was like... To anyone who doesn't know what Yin Yang Yo is, it's like two rabbits, one who can do... Who's an expert with weapons and punching and stuff like that, and the other who is an expert in magic. And they're practicing this... Uh, was they're practicing this martial art called... Uh, was it Tang Wu? Or it was Wu something. What was it? What was the name of that? Uh, you're gonna make me look it up now. Ying Yang, yo, what was the what was that? What was that power? It was uh, it was called uh, Wu Fu. That's what it was, Wu Fu. Yeah, and I remember like the reason why they're the only two people that do is because I, I think the canonical reason is because the main bad guy hypnotizes the world into the thinking that Wufu was stupid. That's which I thought that was really funny. Uh, Code Lyoko is, oh yeah, yeah. Code Lyoko. That's a, that's a show I haven't seen in a while. You know, like I remember liking it when I was like a young child back in the day and I enjoyed it fine. Uh, I'm not sure how old, how well it holds up. I'm like, for whatever reason, like some of my friends don't like it as much. Like just say like that show is not great, but I haven't seen it in a while. So, but, you know, maybe, uh, I'd be, I'd be open-minded to give it another shot to see how it is. Uh, let's see here. Skunk Fu, part of the cartoon Splatoon, all that stuff. Song of the Sea. You used to watch Digimon and Jet X. Yeah, same here. I, I watched, I, I watched it. It was, it was similar to my experience of watching Dragon Ball Z in that I would watch episodes of Digimon out of context. And if I was lucky to find a trail of episodes on time, I could catch up with it and then I'd be fine. But, you know, a lot of the times I wouldn't know what the fuck is going on. Uh, and then I just sort of, like, uh, let's see here. Alejandro. Alejandro hates Cold Lyoko. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I heard him, like, you know, saying something like that. But, you know, he has a right to his opinion. That's fine. That's, that's, but again, I, again, I haven't seen it in a while. So I don't know if I, if I like it or dislike it. So I'd have to see it again. Let's see. Oban Star Racers. I've never heard of that one. Uh, let's see here. And I think another good show that's got a cult following was the Sonic was the Sonic show. The one with Oh yeah, Sonic Set AM. I have this is gonna shock some of y'all. I have seen Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog on Toon Disney. 
but I have never seen a single episode of Sonic Sat Again. Not a single one. Because uh, I watched, like, was it on a separate network? Was it on ABC Family or something? Or was it just, like, somewhere else? Because I, yeah, I've, I've never seen, I've only seen, like, a few episodes here and there. Like, I saw the ending episode because I was very curious of what it was. And I read, like, a few, uh, let's see here. Are you interested in the discotheque release of Adventures? Very interested, yes. Uh, if I get the chance to, like, ever get money for something, if I have money to spare, I want to grab that stuff if it's affordable, because I grew up with that show as a kid. That was, and I've tweeted about this before, if anyone who follows me on Twitter, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog was my first introduction to Sonic the Hedgehog, like, completely. Like, I... Uh, let's see. Just me when I say... Oh, no, I believe you! I believe that set, set AM is good. I believe you. Like, I've heard, I've heard clips of Jim Cummings as Dr. Robotnik, I've heard, I've seen the animation, the way it looks, and, uh, I think it, 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 like, it's visually, it, it looks like it's held up very well, and I'd love to read it, like, and from what I've read of the Archie comics before it got discontinued, and to be fair, the IDW series is really, really good, uh, but yeah, you know, the, from what I've seen of Archie, it's really nice, uh, let's see here, speaking of the ancient texts, uh, bringing up Asia. Really? That thing is dead? ABC Family is gone? Oh my god, I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, okay, that's something, because, you know, I, I don't, I don't use cable as much anymore, so I'm a bit out of the loop when it comes to, uh, certain things. I know that Toon Disney is no longer a thing, I know that it's Disney XD and Disney Channel now, uh, and Disney Junior. I know that Nickelodeon is still, like, it's still Nickelodeon, there's still... Nicktoons, it's just, it's not called Nicktoons Network anymore. It's weird, because it started as Nicktoons, then it went to Nicktoons Network, and then it went to Nicktoons again. Uh, and then, uh, what else is there? There's Nick Jr., which was Noggin originally. That's what it was called originally. Uh, yeah, it became a free form for a wholesome, a uh, wholesome religious cartoon. I never turned a religious cartoon. Yeah, yeah, I always liked ABC Family. You know, it's, like, it's funny, because I haven't watched that much ABC Family when I was younger. Like, I'd only catch it on occasion, like, if I had, like, my uh, TiVo. Remember those? TiVo? You know, the DVR sets and all that stuff. I, I would catch it on, and then I would watch a show. Maybe it was Disney or something like that, and I'd watch it. Yeah. Uh, Let's see here. Oh, man. We're just... This is turning into... So far, this is an okay stream so far. Like, we're... We're, uh, just, we're just vibing about nostalgia from the 2000s, you know, my childhood and stuff like that. And I'm sure a lot of your childhoods, too. Uh, let's see here. The CW, uh, remember when, ki well, remember, like, like, you know, to anyone who knows, uh, because I see CW, remember, uh, let's see here. I'm not even that old, and this is making me feel like, <laughs> yeah, I have that power. I had that power over people. <laughs> oh, man. I do have that power. I'm glad you're enjoying it, Sh Sh uh, Sharka Frank. Uh, am I saying your name correctly, sir? Sharka Frank? Shark A Frank? Like, is it uh, Shark A Frank? Shark A Frank? Uh, let's see. Sally, my childhood was restricted when it came to TV shows heavily. You know, that, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Like, I knew a few kids in elementary school. Like, I knew a kid who was not allowed to watch Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Like, he just was not allowed to because his parents, like, hated it and stuff like that. They forbade him for watching that show. And I was so, like, so shocked by that. So, sh Sharker Frank. Okay, cool. Perfect. I'll, I'll I'll keep calling you that. If I'm wrong, then please let me know. Uh, but how, are you okay? Is it okay if I just call you Frank for short? Or would you prefer your full name, Sharker Frank? I just, I don't want to step on too many toes. Uh, let's see here. But yeah, like, I knew a kid, I knew a kid who didn't want to watch that, or at least didn't, but I'm hoping he gets the opportunity to, like, watch it again all these years later. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, Boba Fett's streaming for some reason. Did, did Boba Fett come out today? Did, did the book of Boba Fett come out? Is, is that out? Is that what happened? Is, is that why it's streaming right now? Or is it coming out this week? Uh, Sharka, okay. Alright, Sharka. Okay, I'll call you that. Uh, let's see here. I know how that feels, finding out most people haven't seen Spongebob. It almost feels like we grew up differently. Yeah, like, especially, like, those first three seasons, man. That's, like, that's gotta be... The first three seasons of Spongebob were the most influence I had on my social media... Uh, on my 
sense of humor like the most the biggest sense of humor influence i've ever had was like those first three seasons exactly it's exact yeah exactly the memes pop culture and stuff like that it, it just sticks in my head all the time like like i was even i was you know just like whenever i think of like christmas stuff i can't help but think of like uh because Christmas feels like the very first Christmas to me. I still hear it. When, I still hear that song I, whenever I go drive in for Christmas or see Christmas lights. I, uh, uh, <laughs> I was thinking of, uh, the, uh, could you spare me a dime episode? Like the one where, the one where, uh, Squidward quits because Mr. Krabs accuses him of stealing his dime. And, uh, <laughs> I still remember that bit where Squidward's in bed. Like, you ever have, you ever see those shows where, like, a joke doesn't hit you until, like, years later, like, the layers of its joke, of, of the jokes, like, don't hit you until years later? Like, the, like, the, I finally, after all these la later, I finally get the joke where, where SpongeBob's like, as, where, as, where Squidward's like, no, no, it has the contaminated lemon! It won't work! And then SpongeBob's like, huh. It won't work. That's two things in this house that won't work. And then it's like, then go fix it. And then he crushes the, the cup and he's like, two things that won't work. I'm like, oh my God. After, at first I thought he was just losing it and he was, but I didn't realize the subtext. I'm like, oh, he means he's telling him to work. And I'm like, cause I, I got it after that point. I'm like, oh, so he was already hinting at that. And, but that was great. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Speaking of which, how was your holiday? Uh, you know, Christmas was fine. Uh, it was not as, not as like joyful or jolly as I would want it to be. But again, I'll go into that at a later point. Uh, this this first stream is probably not the best time to be talking about heavy shit. I, I don't mean to bring that in, but there there uh, I'll, there's a time and a place for that. I'll I'll tell you about it in a bit. But um, like overall, the holiday I, I got I got the stuff most of the stuff that I wanted, and uh, but you know that's that's all I'll leave with that uh, with that holiday. Uh, still like Christmas. It's just you know I'd prefer to be celebrating it with a different group if you get my dude. But again, not gonna dig into that. Uh, this is not that stream for that. This is not the same place. Uh. <clears throat> Um, let's see here. Uh, one of the writers for seasons two through four is C.H. Greenblatt. Yeah, exactly. C.H. Uh, Greenblatt of Chowder, uh, Harvey Beaks, from what little I've seen of it, I thought Harvey Beaks was really good. Mm -hmm. Jellystone, which is a fantastic HBO Max series, and you should be watching it. If you're not, you are missing out on some funny Hanna-Barbera stuff. I'm telling you, it's good things, and like... Yeah, like, they change up characters and stuff like that, but it's for the better. There's, It's not like... The, yeah, exactly. Jellystone is amazing. It's it's one of the funniest things I've seen in a while. The SpongeBob movie is also certified. Yes! Yes, it is. The first two SpongeBob movies are just some of the best, like, writing I've seen from the show, period. I love both of those movies equally. I haven't seen the third one. Don't really want to see it. Don't. It doesn't really seem like my cup of tea. Uh... What will be your plans for 2022? Alex Justice asks. Uh, I'm hoping with uh, I'm hoping to make time doing to streams like this, like this one. Uh, you know, I've got some goals for s streaming that I've written down on my iPhone, just uh, for reference that I'd like to do. And uh, yeah, I want to do I want to do I want to do that. As far as voice acting goals, I want to make a uh, I, I want to like make some more things, you know, like, network a bit more and take more chances and stuff like that. Working on my story portfolio, once I get done and announce it and look for work, I aim to move to LA by the end of 2022. Well, I, I wish you the best of luck, Julian. Uh, just make sure, like, when you show up here, like, and this is me being very serious here, uh, make sure that you have a set plan when you arrive here, because it's, uh, it's very expensive. Um, it's also like uh it can be it can be a bit stressful to manage certain things just uh keep that in mind and make sure like it, it helps to know people out here if you know people out here they can help you out a lot you know it, it really helps a lot in that regard because i was lucky to be born in california like you know to be born out here so and i still live with my parents currently but i am making a plan like in and like in about two or a couple years time to move out and stuff like that but again for reasons why won't go into 
just yet. That'll be for another stream. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's see here. The third one's really just there to pave the way for the spin-off trope of main cast as kids. Oh yeah, that's right. You're talking about the third SpongeBob movie. Yeah, I, I saw a Saber Sparks review on it and figured that's kind of what it was. And yeah, again, I'm not gonna... Not to sling mud on the hard people, because animation is hard. It takes a lot of time and effort. I want to make that very clear. I'm not one of those cynical assholes that will go out of his way to, like, to say these people are terrible for doing that. I can't stand people like that. I am somebody who will give credit where credit is due. They put a lot of time and effort to make the animation the way that it is. And you know what? For what from a presentation point, it actually looks pretty well from what I've seen in the trailers. I, It doesn't look like something that I would be into. But I'm sure some people might like it. It's it's not the kind of SpongeBob movie that I'd be into, that I that I watch, and I don't really have any interest to look into it unless I do some kind of like video essay topic on it. But well, I don't know. It it depends on what it is. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, because like, you know, because I don't want to name names, but like, there are like, there's this like so, this this certain culture in criticism on YouTube and a few other places that I don't agree with, and that's, like, they feel, like, there's this, like, overly cynical attitude to certain reviews. They feel the need to, like, um, to, like, overanalyze certain things. They feel the need to be, uh, su super negative all the time and find errors and just, it doesn't feel like they're criticizing something in a fair way. Like, there is a, to give an example of what I'm talking about, um, again, if you know who I'm talking about, leave this person alone. This is just me, just, just talking here, uh, this is just me offering an observation and opinion. Uh, there's this guy uh, who did this review of the rise of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And his biggest criticisms, the ones that I took away from his review were, uh, he said that the animation was bad, and he thought that the show was changing too much too soon. Which, and I know, it's I hesitate using the phrase bad take or shitty take, but like when, when people say shitty take... I think what most people, for me personally, when I say stuff like that, it's like when you make a very bold claim on something, when you make a very bold opinion and say, this thing, this thing is bad, like, and for all, for this, and then, like, you make a super duper bold claim, and you don't do a good job of conveying your perspective in a way that people hey, understand. welcome aboard. Thank you for the follow, my man. Appreciate it. Uh, but, but. Vitalius, Vital Vitalis, I'm so sorry if I'm pr uh, pronouncing it wrong. It's, I I'm, I'm gonna get it right. Uh, but anyway, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so when it comes to that kind of attitude, like, when you say something super bold and you don't do a good job of, like, having people understand your perspective in a way where it's like you're not opening up a conversation, you're saying, no, this is, this the way it is, it, it is just, it's bad, and anyone who disagrees with me has a lower opinion, then it's like, it's just... It doesn't open up any conversations, and it just shuts things down. Uh, let's see here. I've already known for a while you enjoy this stuff. Yeah, it, it, it's like, yeah, that's why, like, that's why, like, I think it's very, uh, important when, uh, when we discuss our opinions that we be, you know, open-minded enough to hear different perspectives. Like, now, I'll even admit, I'm just as fallible as anyone else. Sometimes I get into arguments with people that I disagree with on opinions. Like, I, I make that mistake, too. But, uh, I at least try my best to recognize, uh, you know, like, just, I've been, tr and also through uh, the help of some therapy, I've been trying my best to keep my, uh, temperament in check whenever I'm talking about a certain topic or whatever, you know, and I try to hear different perspectives, and before, I, and I try to recognize that my first thought is not my best one, so I try my best to to, like, give some kind of, like, when I'm giving feedback or I'm giving an opinion or an argument, I try my best to, uh, temper myself in a way where I'm still, you know, being appropriate, still not, I'm not being a dick or anything like that, and, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's basically what I'm trying to do, you know, just open up a conversation and stuff like that, you know, because, again, I'm not gonna name names, but, like, there was one individual, uh, who, like, he is a very talented guy. Like, he is a talented animator and a talented creator and stuff like that. And I've interacted with him. I've helped him, like, uh, with a few of his assets for uh, some of his stuff. But, like, the way he 
speaks about stuff, like, is, like, super cynical and super jaded and very, and he tends to, like, whenever he's challenged, he tends to, like, put people down and say that his opinions, that their opinions are lower because they have a, you know, they just, they're, <clears throat> because they, <sighs> because, sorry, I'm trying to come to words, they, because they're just, like, they have uh, low standards and stuff like that, and I, ch I call them out on it, and, you know, just, I've gotten to a point where it's just, like, it's just, you know, it, it's, stuff like that I, I do not agree with. I, I don't agree when people have that kind of attitude towards, uh, discussion. I think it's just kind of, you know, it, it's just not appropriate. I think it's just, like, super rude, and it doesn't help anything, you know? Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's my take on that. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my tangent on uh, discussing opinions and uh, why I'm super passionate about that stuff. So uh, yeah, let's see here. I'm gonna scroll up a bit and see what's here. To be receptive, even if you disagree. Yeah, exactly. Like you should be understand. Uh, yeah, you should be willing to you know listen. Like even if you disagree with someone, you should be willing to like hear them out on something. Now, granted, like uh, like if it's something like art, like you know, like if it's Something as subjective as art, because it's all subjective. That's the thing, like, that's another thing I need to mention about. Um, subjectivity versus objectivity. I want to make a video about this at some point uh, on my uh, YouTube channel, uh, if I ever get the time, because uh, after some streams, but, like, this is something I've always wanted to talk about, like, objectivity versus subjectivity, is that, like, subjectivity, like, I believe that, like, no matter what happens, like, your opinion on a piece of art will always be subjective. Your impact, like, how you take in a piece of art is subjective. I believe there is no such thing as saying, this movie is objectively bad, or this game is objectively bad. It enrages me when people do that, when, like, when people feel the need to say that this thing is objectively bad because of this and that and that and that. It's like, yeah, like, general consensus believes that this movie or game is bad for this list of reasons. Like, you can give, like, objective evidence to back up your claim. Sure, that's objective. Like, this is a thing that objectively happens in the game or the movie, but how it affects you is ultimately subjective and ultimately up to you. And I always stand by that. Like, I just, I, I don't feel right telling people, well, that thing, like, for one thing, uh, I'm not a fan of, like, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think here. Uh... There was a point in time, I haven't seen the Star Wars prequels in a while, but, like, I think that, like, those movies are just, the mo the way that they're written, like, the first two, specifically, are not great, in my opinion. I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna go out of my, so if someone says that they like the prequels, I'm not gonna go out of my way and say that, well, man, really? It's like, what's wrong with you? Like, no, that's, that's, that's a douchey thing to do. I, I wouldn't do that. Uh, I mean, granted, like, some people do that as a joke, but you really need to know someone before you do that. There has to be a level of trust. You don't you don't just do that to a stranger. That's like that leaves a really bad impression. It's like if if someone knows that you're not trying to like, you know, be a dick to them, then that's then that's fine, you know? Let's see. It says exactly, elitism. That is exactly what that is. Like like there was this tweet a while ago, like I'm not going to again, not going to name names, but like there's this one uh that I saw that had, uh, it was, like, basically telling everybody, it, it was basically just gatekeeping, it was a guy saying, like, if you're into, if you're into Dragon Ball, or My Hero Academia, or One Piece, then you are not an anime fan, basically just saying, like, yeah, no, like, someone else's enjoyment, and all that stuff, yeah, exactly, it, it's, it, it doesn't offer a lot of, it doesn't offer a lot of perspective. It's just, it's just like, it doesn't make having a conversation with that person fun, you know? Sorry, this is water. I've been talking a lot. Uh, but yeah, it's just, you gotta ha be willing to like share perspective and, you know, you just, you gotta, you know, let's see here. Aunt. Anti, anti Twitter can I, can I talk to you? Yeah, you know, there's there's gatekeeping and stuff like that. But hey, we try to you know, as long as like we're opening like you know a chance to like do stuff like that and you know discuss and stuff like that, we're we're cool. We're cool with that. We can we can have enough common sense to try our best to be open minded and hear people out and just just talk. You know, let's see here. How many people are in here? Oh wow. 
There's more of you in here. Wow. Let's see here. <laughs> well, hello, everybody who just entered in. Uh, uh, we're just uh, chatting about stuff. Just We went from, like, 2000s nostalgia and talking about why uh, we should, you know, not be dicks to each other when we're talking about opinions and stuff. No one was no one was causing any trouble. We were just, you know, talking about opinions and stuff like that. Just general conversation. Just general stuff, you know. Uh, let's see here. And let's see here. Any other things to discuss uh, in particular? Uh, let's see here. On side note. Oh, side note. Yeah? What's up? What be on the side note? King Wea dude. Let's see. Reminds me. Uh, thoughts on No Way Home. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I, I hey, thought... Welcome aboard. Hey! Ohio... Oh, shit! I know who this guy is! Ohio guys! Yeah, that's right! You are you follow me on Twitter. You're, my, you're friends with, like, friggin' uh, Bill Butts and all that. Hey, that's right. Yeah, I'm not gonna say anything, but like, oh shit, Ohio guys. Uh, these dudes, like, I, I, I think they do a podcast. Uh, they, they gave uh Justin Cook something really cool, like a, like something. Was it like Yu Yu Hakusho? Was that what it was? Was it like a wooden plaque with Yu Yu Hakusho something on it? Was it? Uh, was it like, was that what it was? You guys, Ohio guy. Uh, oh, okay, cool, perfect. Uh, all right. Um, anyway, anyway. Uh, so, wooden carving. Yes, I knew it. Got it. I, my memory was correct there, because uh, I remember Bill Butts had an interview with Justin Cook on his live stream, and he was, uh, he was talking with Justin Cook, and then he brought that out, because he remembered them, and I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, that's great. Uh, but anyway, uh, so, Spider-Man No Way Home. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it. Uh, yes, Bill is a good man. My man. Anyway, uh, so my thoughts on, like, the Spider-Man movies, like, I ge like going in order, uh, just in general from, like, just in general, like, uh, again, no spoilers in chat, but, like, this is just my experience with the Spider-Man franchi film franchise, like, the different series that have been there. Like, I grew up with the Tobey Maguire movies. Those were my first taste of Spider-Man. Uh... I liked Toby as a kid and enjoyable. Like, there's some flaws with the way that Peter Parker is performed. I will admit that. Uh, like, I think he can be a bit too... A bit too... Uh, what's the word? Like, t a little too... Uh, sp I don't know. Like, there's there's something... There's something off about, like, about like when it started out. Uh, I was like, uh, it was fun, but I'm drifting off my schedule. Off. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. Of course. It was great to have you here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no. A little melodramatic. Uh, you know, the melodrama doesn't really bother me that much. But, yeah, I think that may have been the issue I had with it. It was, But, actually, you know, no, I, I actually like the camp of it. The camp was fine. I actually enjoy When a show is, like, over the top or a movie is over the top, like... And to be fair, like, it's camp in just that right way, where, like, it's over the top and it's having fun with it, and it's, like, into its own craft. Like, I think, and Sam Raimi is just, like, a very well-competent, like, very well done. Like, if you've ever seen his, like, Evil Dead movies, like, he is a master at, like, camera work and all that stuff. And But anyway, like, yeah, no, the first two were pretty solid. Loved both of those. Uh, Spider-Man 2, I'd rewatch, and I still love it to an extent. Spider-Man 1, I watch uh, on occasion, and we watch and enjoy it fine. Uh, the, uh, let's see here. The, uh, third one, I know a lot of people didn't like that one when it first came out. I actually liked it when it first came out, when I, because, but I was a kid at the time. Um, over time, like, I kind of liked Tover Grace a little less in the role of Eddie Brock. I didn't think he fit that role. I'm sure he's a fine actor. I haven't seen that 70s show. I haven't seen the stuff that he's in. I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's good. I just don't think he was the right fit for Eddie. I was just at the time, little kid me was just excited to see Eddie Brock on the screen. Like I didn't, I didn't care about the actors at the time that much into it. I, I only remembered a few names, but anyway, uh, Spider Man Three is like, yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, let me see here. There's, I don't want to say it's a guilty pleasure because like there's, there's stuff about it that I like. Like I, I'm, I'm easy on it, you know. Like, but like. Yeah, sure, okay. I, I, maybe I would say it's a bit of a guilty pleasure in the sense of, like, I don't 
genuinely, th I like it for some, I li like it both out of irony and there's some good stuff in it, like, uh, you know, the, like, when, it's hard to say, like, th there's some things about it that have not aged well, but I haven't, and again, I haven't seen Spider-Man 3 in a while, but, I, but yeah, as far as, like, a trilogy, I think the Spider-Man Sam Raimi one was, was like, yeah, enjoyed Sandman and Spider-Man 3, I felt so sorry for the guy. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I felt, I felt for him too. Uh, my only issue is that, like, I, I listened back to, like, some, I'm, sh I'm sure, like, it, let me see here, like, my dad pointed this out to me, and, and here's something that, uh, he, uh, Sandman was, uh, when he attacks, when he attacks, uh, Peter Parker, like, like, for the first time when he's fighting Spider-Man, you get it, like, he's, being hunted down because he's a criminal, right? I you get that part, but like during the climax, Sandman literally has no reason to fight in that thing. No reason, none. Like he's just in the. He's just he's just a part of the climax. Like his his daughter's not being held hostage. He's not. It's none of that stuff. No, Venom's just like, hey, you want to help me kill Spider Man? Someone's like, all right, that's it. That's all, that's all it is. There's no, there's nothing like that. I'm like, no, Sam is just like, I'm here to, exactly. He's, he's just there. And, uh, yeah, I, that, my dad and I noticed that. I'm like, yeah, no, he just doesn't have anything. It's just like, I, I'm glad that we at least got some, like, emotional closure with him. Like, hey, uh, you know, just, I'm sorry about what I did earlier. It was, uh, not okay. I didn't mean to kill your uncle like that. And, but that was fine. But anyway, like, the Sam, uh, Sam Raimi trilogy, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I saw the What Happened video. That was, the, like, the Spider-Man 3 What Happened video that Matt McMuscles put out. The very informative stuff. Go check that out if you want to know about the Venom situation. But anyway, so, uh, let's see here. He was on the fence of things. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, the Sam Raimi trilogy I thought was pretty, was pretty solid. The third film was a bit wonky, but it had, but I don't hate it like everybody else does. Um, let's see here. The Amazing Trilogy, the Amazing Duology, the Andrew Garfield movies, the Mark Webb movies, uh, I think the first one, from what I remember, was pretty decent, pretty good. I, I like the first one. Like, I think Andrew Garfield, like, through those movies was consistently good. He was one of my favorite parts, especially Gwen Stacy. Man, Gwen Stacy was great in those movies. I loved her. And it's, it annoys me because I wanted to like Mary, like, I remember as a kid, I liked, I liked Mary Jane when I was younger, just because, like, I'm into redheads and stuff like that, and I'll, I'll say this right now, I've always been a Mary Jane guy, always have been, Mary Jane in the comics, badass, Mary Jane in Spectacular Spider-Man, badass, M Mary Jane in PS4 Spider-Man, a little weird sometimes, but you know, still a fucking badass, uh, MJ in the Sam Raimi films, kinda toxic, in my opinion, uh, you know, uh, not, not a great person, uh, I haven't, again, I haven't seen, but, you know, there's that. Uh, but anyway, uh, back to the Amazing Duology. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man, I think that she, that, like, Gwen Stacy and Peter, like, their relationship with each other was great. Like, just great the whole way through, and it was really fun to watch. Uh, then, uh, what else was there with that? Uh, with uh, the Amazing Trilogy, like, the Amazing Duology, like, I enjoyed, like, the action scenes for the most part, like, especially in Spider-Man 2, like, I think that, Amazing Spider-Man 2, I think that the action scenes were just top-notch, like, there's some really well-directed, like, effects and all that stuff. Like, say what you will about, like, you know, Electro and how he just suddenly becomes a villain out of nowhere, like, the development was not that great, but, again, I haven't, and I haven't, I've seen, like, bits and pieces of, like, Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man was pretty solid for, like, for the most part, there's some wonky things with it, but overall, I think, and I haven't seen a while, the, the only thing in those movies that I wasn't really all that interested in was the subplot with Peter Parker's parents being spies. I didn't really care about that part. Uh, but, uh, let's see here. Um, um, let's see here. What else did uh, Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2, I, um, is a movie that I both love and hate at the same time because, uh, it has things about it that I, uh, like, I think Andrew is still really good. I love that new costume. I love that new costume to death. Uh, I, uh, was not 
uh, I was not a big fan of what they did with Norman. I mean, with with Harry. Uh, I think they. Uh, that I feel like that movie was way too overpacked with stuff. That like there's not there's way too much shit going on in that movie. Everything happens all at once, and there's so much shit to the point where it starts to lose focus, and it's really hard. And it's just like it was really hard, and they were really they really wanted their Sinister Six movie. They really wanted it, but. They just did, they they needed time to develop. They Electro should have just been the main villain for that if they wanted like to do the whole thing. And the thing with and I'll say this uh, to anyone who's seen the thing with like you know if anyone knows like you know the event when uh, you know who um, I think they pulled that off really well in terms of like execution. But I think I don't think it was earned. I don't think that moment was earned when they did that because like. When, when the goblin shows up, because uh, you know, it, it, he doesn't look all that great in my opinion, uh, and also when he shows up, like it just, it's like, oh hey, we just, we we beat Electro, and then all of a sudden we get this random ass fucking scene, and then out of nowhere, and then shit happens. It's not like uh, I don't want to spoil it, but there's like this anime movie that did this, and it was really well done. I won't spoil it. I won't spoil what movie it was, but if you know what I'm talking about, uh, there's a moment where, like, they beat this big bad guy that's the main villain of the movie, but then out of nowhere, a new villain shows up, and then the fight is just as good, just as well developed. This was not the case in this movie. It was, uh, the, the, the fights, the encounter was like, oh, and then he jets off, and then uh, we don't have an actual fight. We're just gonna recreate this scene from the comic because you know we need that and then they did it but you know that's that's just me i, I was not a fan of how they did that I, I i think the way they executed that death scene was superb but i was not a fan of the way you know i was not a fan of like the build up towards it i don't think it was earned uh but that's that's just me that's just my opinion with that uh Oh yeah, Paul Giamatti was fun. Paul Giamatti was a fun character, you know. It was like the Rhino Mac and all that stuff. That was that was fun. I know people gi give the movie a lot of grief towards uh I know people give a, that movie a lot of grief towards uh you know the the scene when Spider-Man comes back after like mourning and all that stuff. But, you know, I I thought it was cute. I thought it was endearing. I liked it, you know. Uh let me see what other stuff would he make. So yeah, that Overall, I think the duology is like it's half and half. It had a direct, it had solid character acting for going for it. It was just troubled with a very wonky story that was just like all over the place in terms of direction. It was trying to like build too many things, trying to stuff so much shit in that like it just wasn't working, you know. Uh, the home trilogy, the John Watts movies, the MCU movies, I think are pretty solid. Like. One, I understand where this criticism comes from, to be fair, and but every time I hear it, it makes me roll my eyes. It's like, this Spider-Man is like, a, is like this isn't my Spider-Man, it's like Spider-Boy and all that stuff. It's like, this Spider-Man, like, he's just Iron Man Jr. I, I hate that criticism so much. I don't care how right it is, or how, like, how many people agree with it. Just because, like, mainly because, like, I'll say this, like, Without spoiling anything, like, yeah, the third movie, I think, was really good, but also, like, I think the fir the other two are pretty solid. Pretty solid. I think they're really good. Like, Homecoming, I appreciate because it's, like, very down-to-earth, very, like, pretty low stakes, you know? Like, the only stakes was, like, mainly, like, within his own hometown and stuff like that, and he does, like, we see Peter's life in high school and stuff like that. That's something we haven't seen before, and I appreciated seeing stuff like It was a John Hughes Spider-Man movie, and I really appreciated that. Uh... Um, let's see here. And what else was there? Then there was the whole thing with, like, Far From Home. There was some critic. I saw, like, a audio review, uh, that someone did. Like, someone had a criticism of Far From Home saying that, like, one that they- The one criticism- The one thing I will give people that- I will say this. Tony giving Peter those glasses, I didn't like that. I thought that was stupid. That was, like, just people with that much power, like, you shouldn't have done that, you know? It didn't align well with the story. I didn't like that. I think it would have been better if Mysterio, like, you know, if there was, like, some plot tied around to that, 
but I don't know. I, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. I didn't like the thing with the glasses. I didn't like that. Uh, Aunt May not being in that movie. You know, I get it. That's fine. Like, she's not the main focus of the story. It's mainly, like, Peter trying to hook up with MJ and all this stuff happening years later with, you know, with the, the snap or the blip, as it's called in the movie, and, and stuff like that. And and I think the action movie is still... Action's still really good. Mysterio. I love Mysterio. I think Jake Gyllenhaal was great in that movie. I, he was so fun to watch and play around with. Uh, Jane, John Watt has it. And, uh... John Watts has a talent for doing his best juggling multiple villains at once. Remember when he, uh, when people were skeptical on how a director could juggle multiple heroes for Avengers? Yeah, it's, it's possible, you know, it's, it, it, it can be done. It's just, um, I think the reason why is because they have, like, I think what John understood, I don't know if this was the intention, John at least understands that, like, there is, like, the top hierarchy villain. This is the main bad guy of the story. These two, they play a part in it. They play a part in it. And they do... They are a threat, but ultimately, this guy is the big bad. These other... So they understand. They were focused there. Hey, Hirano's here! Hey, how you doing? I haven't, I haven't seen you in a while. How you doing, friend? Uh, we're just talking about Spider-Man. No spoilers, obviously. But, uh... Uh... Uh, it's like tired. Yeah, it's it's been a long it's been a long uh, kind of thing. But anyway, uh, no spoilers here. Uh, no, d Windows don't. No, Windows go away. Uh, sorry, it's just notifications and stuff like that. Just gotta tell Windows not to send all this stuff. But anyway, anyway, I was talking about Home trilogy and how villains or stuff like that. We were talking about Home. So like the first two movies, yeah, I I think they're solid. Like I don't. And again, like, I understand where the criticism of, like, he's just Iron Man Jr. I get where that criticism come from, comes from, and I understand it, but I do not agree with it, and it and it, roll, it makes me roll my eyes every time I hear it. Uh, I know it's childish, but that's just, that's just me. But any, but yeah, No Way Home, uh, again, without spoiling it for anyone in chat, uh, it does, it does answer a lot of those criticisms, to be fair, and it does sort of find a neat balance to make Spider-Man, you know, to have him, it's sort of like, I like to imagine it like this. Because when you're in high school, you know, like, there's always, like, all sorts of drama and stuff that happens. Like, you're, like, it se things seem like the end of the world, but really, like, you always have that, like, safety net. That You always have that safety net to go back to. And for Peter, his safety net in high school was Tony and his Aunt May, and, uh, and Buddy and all these other people, but in, uh, and, but in, uh, in, in No Way Home, it's sort of like, again, not spoiling anything, and this is really just because, like, you know, because this is shown in the trailers, like, just because the stakes are raised, this is basically what happens when that safety net is pulled away. Like, after high school, you are now venturing into the world of college or maybe you're venturing into the world of the working force and that's i feel like that could be a very and in spider-man's case it's like i am now venturing into the world of college the world of being spider-man for real and it's stressful and it's hard and i don't have anything to, i'm on my and i'm doing all this stuff you know and it's really hard to do you know i uh and it's it's that's basically what it is and yeah i like i mean it's a long-winded origin story spanning six movies I sort of agree and disagree with that, but I, I I get that perspective. Like you know, it's his like starting. It's sort of like with uh, like with Deku when he's starting out as a hero. I again, no spoilers for my hero. I have not seen any of season five. I have not. The last episode I've seen was the uh, was the um, was the UA Culture Festival. The one with the uh, the one where they're singing. They're singing uh, Hero 2. That's the last episode I've seen. Do not tell me anything past that, please. But anyway, yeah, like, it's sort of like him coming to his own, and then he has, like, people who he, he can rely on, but as problems become much more bigger, he has to, like, step up and and really, you know, do that stuff. I've seen most of this, so, yeah, no spoilers. Okay, good, perfect, no spoilers. Uh, The one with Gentleman... Yes, that is the last one I've seen. The one with, like, uh... Uh, gentle crime. That was the last one I saw. Uh, I haven't seen anything past that. Don't tell me anything, please. Or Alex, or anyone else in chat who has not seen it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, Spider-Man, but yeah, No Way Home, I think, is, like, the second best Spider-Man movie, like, 
Spider Verse will always be my number one. I love it way too much. And uh, oh yeah, hold on a second. I actually, I actually got something. So the, so I'm gonna commemorate. Hold on. I got something that y'all might want to see. If I still have it. On the way back. Gotta dig into my bag of costumes. If I had the masking gear, hopefully. Oh. But yeah, um, check this. Hopefully I'm wearing this the right way. Oh shit, I'm wearing, <laughs> I'm wearing it upside down. <laughs> oh man. Feel free to clip that one. What do you think this? Yeah. I got this on uh, eBay a while back. Around, um, I want to say, you know, Halloween of 2018 or 19. Because, you know, that's when the Spider-Man... That's when Spider-Verse came out and I loved it. And I'll tell you something. I'll tell y'all something about Spider-Verse. I love that movie with all of my heart. Because it's like... It's like this beautiful work of animation. It actually tries to, like, make animation, you know, unique. It, CG animation that it doesn't have to be the same thing over and over again. They can try new things, and I really liked it. Uh, let's see here. I do enjoy this from Rosaka's, uh High School. He thinks that... Uh, let's see. You should get the Etsy one with the moving eyes. Uh, I don't know. Those are... I'm sure, like, the Etsy... Is, are those, like, super expensive? Because, like, I don't... This one I just got just because it looked nice and cool. Oh, yeah. And I, that's something I'm looking forward to. The new Spider-Verse. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these off because I'm starting to make the lenses a little foggy. Hold on. But, yeah, I, lo I love that mask so much. I love it. Ultimate Spider-Man. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's what he is. Before, uh, before the Ultimate Universe got wiped completely oh yeah spider verse part one yeah i saw the trailer for that uh when i was at uh when i was at la comic con as i was leaving and i i was super excited to see it wait jaden cosplay oh who is this hello what is going on jaden cosplay i feel like i've seen your name somewhere around uh did we ever interact in any other like uh twitch chats or anything like that have we ever done anything like that at all yes no maybe so uh because i feel like i've seen you somewhere before uh let's see here i'm trying to think here sorry i'm opening up my dashboard trying to look up uh other stuff here uh create a dashboard perfect uh let's see here spider spider versus animation paved the way for other projects like arcane and now the bad guy yes exactly arcane like who here has not seen Arcane? Who has not seen it? You have seen Arcane? All right, Harano, I'm gonna tell you something. Arcane is one of the is the the best. Like it doesn't it doesn't matter it doesn't matter. Arcane is the best video game adaptation I've seen in forever. Like it is so well animated. It is uh. It is like it's like. You take a look at, like, concept art, right? It's basically that, but moving and motion. Like, you can see the strokes of it just moving around. It just, it looks so good. It's so great. And, like, granted, I'll even admit, like, I only played League, like, maybe once or twice. But it's still, like, but the world of it is so fascinating. And the characters are great. And the animation, man. Like, the, 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 the friggin'. Oh, man, I, I just, I love so much about it, and I cannot, I cannot wait for that next season, especially for that, that crazy cliffhanger, which I will not spoil, but it is nine episodes, please give it a watch, it's on Netflix, it's really good, please watch it, please, Hirano, please, my friend, please, it is so good, uh, I was like, lately to you, the mask, oh, uh, <laughs> 
You did. Oh, you did. I was on. Uh, let me see here. Really? Oh, hold on a second. Uh, Linky. Uh, it's like you should check out Legends of Rune Terra. Is that like a? Is that an animation for, on YouTube for League of Legends? Uh, let me see here. X is so good. We're seeing a lot of that tonight. Oh, yeah. That, that it's true. It's true. Yeah, we are saying that a lot tonight. That is our thing. And uh oh, let's see here. We are uh hold on a second. We have reached the end of our timer, folks. Uh but um let's see here. I'm gonna see if I can scroll over here if I can find any uh questions or anything like that that I missed whatsoever. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Ultimate Spider Man, if Marvel is ever going to have live action on it. What, who will fight for that role when it happens? Okay, so I'm going to make time for one more question before we close things out. Uh, uh, mainly just because it's 9 and, uh, you know, it's going to be late night and this will be the thing about that. Uh, uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, please well, d uh, don't feel free to has – don't feel uh, – don't feel afraid. Feel free to ask and stuff like that and, uh, yeah. Um, let's see here. Thank you for the fun. Does anyone have any last questions before we deck out? Thank you for the fun. Of course, no problem. Uh, who do you want to play Miles in live action? Okay, so... Let me see, that's really tough. Uh, because it's gotta be, like... I'd say, like, it really depends on, like, what era of Miles they're doing. If they're doing Miles in live action, like... It's like, oh, no, that's that's never gonna happen. No, I would, but but I appreciate I appreciate the comment. I'm flattered, but no, yeah, no, uh, that would never happen. Uh, but I'm trying to think here, I think Donald's Miles's uncle. Yeah, that's something. Uh, but like Miles would have to like it would be after if it was in the MCU, it would probably have to be someone who is younger or something like that. I would think. I'm I'm his he, I'm thinking of him right now. Hold on a second, if I can think of his name. Uh, the the kid. Uh, Caleb Mc McLog McLogan. I think that's how you say his name. The kid from Stranger Things. That guy. Uh, yeah. I think he's the first one that come to my mind. I think he would be a really good Miles Morales. Like he's got he. he I even saw. I even pulled up like an image of him randomly. Like, he has, like, muscles and stuff, and I'm like, dude, he, he could work out. He could do that. He could be Miles. It's, like, for real. That guy, he, the guy's got skills. Like, he could totally do it. And he's he's 20. It's like, yeah, he's 20 years old. Sure. But, you know, you could probably, like, you know, make him seem like in high school and have it during that time. And, yeah, again, it really just depends on, you know, stuff like that. And like, He looks down. Yeah! My, yeah, exactly. He does look like it. He could pull it off. You could totally do it. Like, just have him, have him take place in high... I, I was saying just because, like, if I recall correctly, like, isn't, like, Miles, like, when he starts the story, isn't he, like, in middle school or something like that, right? Like, it, doesn't he start all, like... Yeah, I, I, know, I know his age. I know that. I know. I'm just asking just because of, like, you know... Yeah, no, I'm not against that. I, he was in high school. Okay, good. Perfect. So, yeah, you could, they, could, they could still make it work. Like, make him look like a high school student because I'm, like... Yeah, they could still do that. I could still see... I, so, yeah, that's my pick. Caleb. I, I would pick that in his 20s. He's already in his 20s. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, it really just depends on, like, how they rework the story and how they do it. And it really just depends on how they direct it. So, yeah, Caleb of Stranger Things, I would I would see that gentleman as Miles Morales. That's that's my pick right now. You can quote that. You can clip that. You can put that down on the Twitter if you want. I'm not objecting to you. That is totally cool. Uh... That is, um, all right, so before we close this off, uh, here's, here's what I want to say. Um, <clears throat> here's what I want to say to you guys. Uh, this is the first of what I hope will be many streams later down the line. I want to do a gaming stream. I want to do an art stream at some point and, uh, maybe have some friends on board through Discord or something like that. Uh, and, uh, we can make that work, but, uh... And uh, I even have an idea for a game stream that I want to do. But uh, so for the rest of this week, uh, I'll, I'll, if you want to stay up to date for when my next stream happens, 
uh, follow me, uh, let's see here, follow me on the Twitter, on the social things that you see down there, and, uh, then I will, uh, you know, put out a thing saying when I go up, and, uh, or if I have something, like, surprise last minute, and, uh, ring the bell, and, or, and, and give me a follow on here, on Twitter, and maybe hit those notifications just so you don't miss out, and, uh, yeah, so, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, I appreciate you all for coming to this stream very much. This is my first thing. I'm so I apologize once again for starting out as late as I did. It's just you know traffic is not your friend, especially in uh, LA County. But uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to see who is we are going to see who is currently streaming right now on my following uh, whoever I'm following right now, and we are going to raid them. And, uh, let's see here. This is going to be an attempt thing, so hopefully this is not a disaster. Okay, so, uh, let's see here. here I'm thinking between, uh, let's see here, uh, we got my friend Connor, or, uh, uh, either Connor or, okay, so let's see here. We, all right, you know what? We are going to raid my friend Connor McKinley. He is, uh, according to this, it says he's streaming, uh, the Banner Saga, too. So, uh, when we enter there, when you guys enter there, say, yeah, there's no obligation, maybe say, like, Kai sent us, or Baby's First first Raid. So, we're gonna do this. Alright? You ready? And, let's see. Alright, let's do it. Thank you for coming, y'all. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, see you next time. Peace!